somebody who has a strep throat, be they be they a child or an adult, you know, what they're going to develop are the classical symptoms of a fever, sore throat. They're going to have pain when they try to swallow food or, or liquids. And uh, that does require antibiotics. If you don't treat it, there is a chance that it can lead to a complication around the throat area or even go uh, down into the lungs. Um, however, uh, the, the, the group A strep that we're seeing causing a pneumonia or causing the infection around the lungs, that seems to be more associated with a preceding viral infection. So if you had a preceding respiratory virus infection like flu, and possibly COVID, that's where it's still not clear, then that infection may resolve, but it sets you up for this group A strep going into your lungs or into the space around your lungs afterwards uh, in, in kids. In adults, um, what happens uh, for group A strep in adults is we think that, you know, kids are the major vectors of group A strep. It can then, lead, you know, just by having a, a sore throat or just coughing, you can get group A strep going from one person to the other. And then in adults, if you have certain types of risk factors, notably things like uh, obesity or diabetes, uh, this puts you, for reasons that are not entirely understood, at increased risk for certain things like the flesh-eating disease. So when we talk about group A strep, you can have what we call non-invasive disease, and that includes things like strep throat or skin infections. And those, of course, uh, they can lead to, to symptomatic you know, manifestations, um, And but you know, you usually catch them early enough because they're problematic, you get antibiotic therapy, and you know most of the overwhelming majority of the time, they'll, they'll get better. And then you have the invasive group A strep, where it, with the invasive group A strep, you'll have things like the group A strep in your blood or the, or the group A strep pneumonia or the, uh, ne uh, the necrotizing fasciitis or flesh-eating disease. And of course, one, the non-invasive one, doesn't necessarily lead uh, directly to the invasive one, there's still some, some, you know, a lot of biology there that we don't quite understand. So when people say I have a uh, strep throat or I'm worried about strep throat, um, th that's one category of disease. Uh, that's not quite the same or even to the same severity as what you'll see, for example, with flesh eating disease, uh, which can be an infection that progresses rapidly within a few hours. First and foremost, let's not get paranoid, right? This is a very common bacteria. It is it is prevalent everywhere. And, you know, 10 to 30 percent of people can carry group A strep and have no disease. The the more invasive diseases like the group A strep pneumonia, primarily in kids, or the flesh eating disease, those are, are, are dramatic, uh, but they are still a relatively infrequent or rare. So what are the basic things that you can do? First of all, if you're not unwell, if you're well, you, you, you don't have to be worried about whether you have flesh-eating disease, okay? These diseases manifest themselves. You don't have to go looking for them. So if you have things like fever and sore throat, okay, which could be group A strep, of course, it could be a viral infection as well, um, but especially if the sore throat uh, is not going away after, you know, two or three days, you're having trouble swallowing with food or with liquids, obviously you should seek me medical attention. And there, they should look to see if you have group A strep. And if you do, they'll recommend some treatments and you should certainly follow up with treatments. N not all of the invasive forms are preceded by the strep throat. So sometimes you'll have things that could be like the early onset of uh, the group A strep in your lungs or in your blood. There, again, you're going to have things like fever. You're going to it's not going to be something that's going to get better with over one or two days. It's going to get worse over one to two days. Um, you can have trouble breathing if it's in your lungs. You can have even pain in your chest. These are all signs that, you know, you really need to seek medical attention. And if you have flesh eating disease, again, the, the, some of the earliest signs will be a fever. Uh, but they will also be, uh, because they, they tend to occur in the, in the limbs, that you're going to have some some redness or, or purplish discoloration, but quite a bit of pain in that limb. And, you know, you may think at the beginning, well, maybe I've twisted my ankle or something like that, except that you don't get a fever when you twist your ankle. And it's not something that, uh, you know, will really be well controlled with, with Tylenol. So if you have those constellation of things where you have fever, you have a little bit of redness or purple discoloration, and you have, you know, quite a bit of pain um, in an area, uh, those are all signs that you should seek medical attention.